Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name's Bobby Waldron. In this video, we're going to be having episode one of our next step by step video build here at Genesis Models, which is going to be Tamiya's 132nd scale Mitsubishi A6M2B0 fighter model. 21. Uh, now this particular kit, I like to call these kits the Fantastic Four, okay? I like to call them the Fantastic Four because the Zero, the Spitfire, the um, Corsair and the P51D Mustang, you know, um, Tammy has brought out those four kits and they've all been fantastic. They've had great reviews and everything. Everybody seems to love them. They are expensive, but they are absolutely sublime. Nicely in a 132nd scale. So that's why I'll call them Fantastic Four. Probably sometime in the future, they'll probably be called the Fantastic Five or something, because I'm sure they're going to like bring out more of these World War II aircrafts in 132nd scale. Um, it's really an aircraft that I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to do one of these Fantastic Four because, you know, as I say, people have um, had so much hype about them. So it's um, uh, going to be enjoyable for me. Me and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this step by step as well seeing how this goes together um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to go about this but I mean you know we do have a problem with the landing gear um, the engine section apparently <coughs> needs a little bit of work so we're going to tackle them um, you know instead of putting decals for our round doors you know I want to show you how to uh, cut out some mechio masks and do that and um, try and give it a bit of a chipping effect there or something like that so um, should be a really nice interesting build now this is a weekly um, step by step video release of Genesis model so best place to see that is go to the Genesis models website just here and in the news tab um, you'll see Every Friday, you'll see one of these episodes being released every Friday in that news tab. So, uh, you know, you can really sort of work your way along week by week watching this. How many episodes it's going to be, I don't know. I haven't built it much yet. So, um, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. We could be talking like 16 episodes. So, there's going to be a lot of footage to this um, because it being a step by step. Now, remember, step by step, we're going to tackle everything you know from the basics so um people who are new to the hobby you know you can see all the basics you can see the intermediate the advanced stuff so everybody can benefit from this video build so um, what we're going to do we're just going to start off with giving a nice inbox review let's have a good look at the kit um, talk about what i've researched what potential problems we might be having and then let's get building so here she is, nicely on the desk, our Mitsubishi A6 M2B Zero Fighter. Um, look at the box art, looks rather nice indeed. Um, and nice um, markings of what we can do here. Moving around, it shows you a few little things. Um, a bit special about the kit, oh yeah, you get a display with it. Um, the box apparently you can um, cut it up and fold it in a way in which you can actually store the kit in the box as you can see there and what looks like to be fantastic cockpit and engine detail going in there as well so let's open it up and let's see um, what it's all about before we even unbox everything and put research into it and everything well first thing you'll notice is this um, this bit of cardboard in here and apparently if we fold it in a certain way as I've just said you can basically lay your model in here and it's supposed to keep it secure in transportation supposed to um, first thing we have right at the top here we have our clear parts nicely separately bagged the bags uh, well strangely the canopy one feels a little bit cheap and thin um, however this one doesn't this one feels quite thick good quality packaging um, and it looks like we do have this nice um, about you know one or two sprues per bag nice big wing section here it's going to be a nice big 132nd scale going on um, looks like we've got nice propellers and bits of engine bits going on in there as well let's just uh, put this out of the way um, our next sprue here um, looks like we have all sorts of cockpit detail and little bits a bit of landing gear going on um, strangely we have the engine section has got a um, kind of like a gumball metal sort of um, plastic going on there which you know I don't kind of see the reason in that because we're just going to spray it anyway but looks like we've got a lot of nice engine detail going on in there 
Um, we have a nice little sprue here in black and this one is for um, our base which is supposed to uh, be not too bad actually because um, this kit is supposed to be you can have landing gear up and down, canopies open closed and you can have it um, apparently in all sorts of configurations um, but we'll talk more about that later then we have a couple of little um, bags here again these little bags seem to be low quality sort of bags but we have a seated pilot and a standing pilot which is a nice touch and they do look rather nice then we have these um, wing tips going on here with some bombs uh, nice bit there um, duplicate um, sprues going on there we've got some mgs i think well no maybe some landing gear and bits and bobs going on in that little bag there uh, fuselage section all nicely one sprue in one bag um, looking nice there and then another single sprue which looks like a few flaps and slats and tails um, you know all nicely individually bagged there then what we have is we have this nice little um, bag here which inside here we have we just pull it out well first off we have this nice color call out for decals paint schemes that kind of thing nice quality paper going on there we have what is a pretty big instruction going on as well you know lots and lots of pages there um, no color but you know we got some a big set of instructions to follow there uh, and then we have this other smaller bag which has a couple of little goodies going on in, in here we have this nice sort of natural metal finish um, kind of like sticker badge for the um, in-flight display base which you can stick on there which is both in uh, Japanese and English um, we have some seat belt covers a little strange but we'll look at them later um, we also have canopy masks as well uh, nice but not as good as you think um, but we'll look at them later we have two lots of decals going on here made by Tamiya um, and we have um, what looks like to be stencils and then we have like actual markings going on here but we'll look at them as I say later then we have a nice little box going on here Mitsubishi Zero Fighter separately boxed for um, some of the interesting bits we have our engine cowl, nicely separately bagged. We'll look at that um, later as well. Then we have what looks like to be a bit of scratch building, a nice bit of thin wire, nicely separately bagged. So good packaging going on there. Um, we have another um, little separately bagged sprue here, which looks like to be some landing gear. As I say, there's something a, um, a, a bit more to explain about the landing gear, but we'll explain that later. We have some nice rubber wheels, which is um, also rather nice. Then we have two little bags here, and we've got all sorts of like screws, bolts, string, um, springs. Um, all sorts of things going on in these two little bags there we have some grease <laughs> grease I know um, and a nice little screwdriver there then we have another little bag here which is, has bits of metal bits going on here which again as I say the landing gear um, needs a bit more explaining but it's not what you think it is and then we have two uh, another bag of just rods and everything going on here so they're giving you um, quite a few things for what would almost look like scratch building and then we have a nice bit of photo etch but we'll talk more about that later so I'm just going to unbag all this do some research research have a good look at it and we'll have a real good look at it in a sec so let's get started with our first sprue this is our wing section now on here it is a um, nice kind of um, flexible plastic um, it's kind of like a nice gray mold but let's have a look at what really makes these kits these fantastic four by Tamiya you know what they are and that is this I mean this absolutely gorgeous surface detail hopefully that you're seeing on here all right, if we can just maneuver that in the light you can just see it's got fantastic recess panel lines nice in scale panel lines nice crisp and then you've got this um, gorgeous um, recess rivet um, going on here which is just full of this kind of nice light recessed 
rivets going on all over and this is what it's like all over the kit absolutely smashing detail if you ask me gorgeous um, and these these um, little rivets here they're, they're nice and light so when you put a wash in there it's not as if it's going to be bam in your face mega um, sort of coming out at you it just lightly goes in there so it just lightly brings out these rivets um, but the, the recessed panel lines are nice so they come out as normal but these are just nice and light and it just looks absolutely gorgeous the top of the wing section here as well looking rather nice too just moving along as you can see gorgeous gorgeous detail we've got no sync problems the flash on here um, is very minimal um, very nice minimal we turn it over now I mean there is like a heap load of ejector pin marks on the underside um, and this is like a bit of a problem this kit is the, the ejector pin marks I mean um, just inside here in our flaps and there we do have ejector pin marks in there so if we have them opened up sadly we're gonna have to deal with them um, our landing gear parts here I mean we're not seeing any ejector pin marks in there so that is um, there moving along we have um, a nice few bits and bobs from um, say our wheel well um, sorry our cockpit four plates a bit of a uh, cockpit detail going on here our propeller then we've got a bit of like engine detail looking rather nice again we've got that lovely surface detail going on just here Turn it over though, and this is a bit, as I say, this is this point inside of the kit, is we do have kind of ejector pin marks sort of everywhere. You turn it over and we just see ejector pin marks. I mean, they are faint, and in a lot of the places, I mean, okay, we probably wouldn't see them. Like the ejector pin marks on here, we probably might not see them. Um, but they are there. They are faint, so you could probably sand them out quite easily, quite quickly. Um, and if you didn't you probably might not see them because they're quite small and faint but you know there's still quite a lot of them our next big sprue here we have like vertical stabilizers and everything and again you know that gorgeous surface detail going on there looking absolutely smashing um, again we've got another propeller going on here not sure about that but we'll check the instructions nice bit of um, instrument display panel going on there that is supposed to be a combination of clear parts and decals which makes them look good nice bit more cockpit detail going on there as you can see that is going to look absolutely gorgeous and all these tiny little pieces making up cockpit detail and everything again another floor plate don't know what's going on there but we'll check the instructions out for that um, uh, was it a fuel tank going on here looking rather nice with that gorgeous detail again um, then we have our um, uh, landing gear detail now we turn it over and this again the disappointment ejector pin marks you probably can just see them in there just shine that in the light ejector pin marks in there not what you want to see that's not going to be easy to take out those ejector pin marks because we've got raised detail, we've got recessed rivet detail going on in there, um, you know, and it's right inside here. So I mean, it's going to be hard to kind of sand out and all this stuff. So, bit of a shame there. Um, then we have wheel wells again. So uh, landing gear bay doors again, ejector pin marks. But then you've got this next generation absolutely gorgeous um, recessed rivets going on inside there as you can see um, you know a shame on these ejector pin marks for such a fantastic looking kit a um, bit more um, engine detail as you can see loads of um, nice crisp very nice good detail for our engine gonna look fantastic it is in this um, um, kind of gunbolt metal sort of color which is no big deal because we're gonna we always spray everything um, we've got some MG going on down here they're also looking rather nice and crisp detail there moving along you do get some nice pilots with this kit which is a uh, very nice as you can see we've got nice detail going on there with our pilot hopefully as you can see there and we've got two we can have one seated one standing um, nice added little extra going on there moving along we have um, some 
wing tips um, so we can have this sort of in a open and closed position and everything as you can see that lovely gorgeous detail going on the bombs aren't two pieces right it is just one whole piece do have some ejector pin marks again on there but they're rather faint and they'll be easy to sand out so i won't worry about them just put that aside moving along we have um, what looks like to be our landing gear going to talk a bit more about the landing gear from what research i've done but they are looking um rather nice there as well just moving along then we have our fuselage section um, which is always a good section to look at again you know that surface detail let's have a good look at it um, this is what makes this kit so fantastic is this gorgeous um, surface detail that we've got going on here it does wrap around rather nicely but as we get around to this side it can fade a little bit just along there so um, doing all those um, recessed rivets again would be a little bit tedious but I mean you know it will look good as you can see absolutely gorgeous detail going on there um, moving along we have uh, our seat going on here that looks like a rather nice seat as well um, but again we turn it over the arrestor hook we have ejector pin marks going on there again I know I keep going on about the um, ejector pin marks but they are rather nice and faint and you could probably get away with a lot of them but they are there um, detail inside the uh, our uh, fuselage looks rather nice we're going to build up such a nice bit of cockpit going on there so that's going to be absolutely gorgeous there um, so there's the the fuselage section looking rather good let's get another sprue out another sprue here is like um, tails and stuff and flaps um, again the detail looks um, fantastic again lovely lovely next generation detail going on there um, <clears throat> moving along with this we have more detail going on around here looking rather nice um, moving this over as you can see inside the flaps we have those ejector pin marks again a um, bit of a shame but they 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 are nice and faint um, so that's that sprue moving along let's get these bags out uh, we do have i'll keep this in the bag but we do have our stand the stand does look um rather nice and i can just imagine spraying that up black giving a real nice good gloss in should look rather good and with those stickers you get with it with those nice kind of metal natural metal finish stickers on there they will look quite good as well so then we come to our canopy section canopy section um, i've got to say it is um you know next generation absolutely perfect there is no cobwebbing effects no cracks no nasty bits um it just looks like glass looking through there and hopefully on camera you can just see how shiny how it just looks like absolute glass absolutely stunning canopy gonna look fantastic um no seam line going down the middle or anything so we put this straight back into our bag and actually you know while we've got all these spare bags going on here as well i'd just throw it in there and just keep it really nicely protected until you need it and then we move on to our little box here of um, goodies uh, here's the engine cowl now this is quite cool with this kit again we've got all this lovely surface detail going on there we'll be able to see this surface detail a lot clearer when we put the wash on at the end of this step by step but what you'll find is cool is how it goes together i think this is quite cool is how that just clips on there like that how cool is that and i, I mean i haven't really kind of done much test fitting as you can see because i'm doing the inbox view but it, it looks like i'm going to build um the the engine in there and then this is just going to clip on and off so that we can have the engine cowl on and off at will 
or so the theory would go but the reviews don't show that then we have our rubber wheels these are looking rather nice no need to really get them out the bag uh, we have our landing gear here and we have all sorts of kind of little spanners and all this kind of stuff because the landing gear gets really complicated we'll talk about that later then we have in here all these little bits of kind of basically um, all the kind of stuff that you'd use for scratch building we've got sort of pins we've got rods we've got bits of wire um, all sorts of things going on here um, we'll have to read the instructions a bit more closer to kind of find out what they are I think the rods are basically for your flaps these like pins and stuff are like for your um, landing gear um, and this I'm kind of guessing is our um, aerial for our radio um, as I've already said you get some grease and a screwdriver we've got these um, springs and o-rings and stuff going on here for like your landing gear very complicated stuff screws bit of rope and then we've got some photo etch so let's have a closer look at our photo etch now the photo etch does look nice now this is going to be all for by the looks of it things like seat belts and um, flaps and those kind of things but oh yeah you kind of you've only got to give it a little bit of a, a bend and sort of feel it and you can tell it's a little bit on the thick side um, definitely thicker than any kind of edard stuff and the problem is with thick photo etch is it's metal it's thick um, for example um, i use these i've, I've done um, thick photo etch before and i use some cutters like this and i literally snapped um, half of this off um, trying to cut these um, thick bits of photo etch up and then you try and sand them down with um, a, a metal file that doesn't really sand down very well so then you end up getting out um, all sorts of power tools to sand down these little bits of photo etch which can be an absolute nightmare um, so hopefully they're not going to be as bad as um, those ones that I've used in the past um, that was for a G91 Yankee so um, maybe they're not as thick as that I don't know we'll have to see hopefully they won't be um, but we'll try and work them out um, so moving along to the last bits here which is going to be our instructions quick little run through the instructions you know these are quite big instructions as you can see um, they are a bit on the complicated side this is definitely a, like an for an advanced builder um, and you don't really want to be spending this kind of money if you're not sort of um, know what you're doing about modeling but we've got a nice description going on in here um, kind of a few tips and tricks for this and that um, but it doesn't start off with let's get out um, the the cockpit and start building the cockpit it's get the fuselage section together um, straight away um, then you build up this cockpit um, which you then slide underneath um, the the um, en engine uh, sorry the um, the main body of the aircraft now as you can see there's lots and lots of detail going on here there's a lot going on you've really got to stop and read the instructions apparently this kit fits together like a glove um, you know there's no real fit issues but if you don't read the instructions and look at the parts and make sure the part numbers go to where they're supposed to go um, it won't fit it will only fit um, if you've got the right part going to the right place so apparently you've got to be careful about that we've got this whole kind of like glass uh, sorry the, the clear parts going into a sterling plastic parts and then decals going on that so it's going to look fantastic as you can see lots and lots of detail now these um, seat belts going to talk about them more but they're supposed to be um, not so good but I think we're going to uh, have a crack at them and kind of get them looking good with a nice bit of attention looks like you're gonna to have to put the pilot in as well with this kit if you want to do a pilot looks like you're gonna to have to put the get the pilot done painted and then sort of bring the pilots and the other half of the cockpit section together for that to work properly um, and as you can see the cockpit section slides underneath um, 
our um, main fuselage section there um, and also those rods and all that photo etch for the um, for any kind of like flaps or anything like that it's uh, it kind of builds in there so that you can have it all moving there's a lots of moving parts you can have with this kit um, again with the um, vertical fin um, you put a rod in there and you can have the, the, the fin sort of moving as well um, then we come to like the whole landing section now with this step-by-step -step video build um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look at it a bit more but from what people say this whole sort of um, landing gear bit where we have um, springs we have suspension going on here as you can see so that you can have the landing gear open close and have suspension and all these kind of things which all sounds really cool but it doesn't apparently work. From the reviews I've read, people say it's quite toyish, um, it's very complicated, to get it to work is um, rather hard, and when it does work, it doesn't actually work that well. For example, there's like suspension in, if we can just move along. Um, here we go. You've got these springs actually in the landing gear, and, um, you know it's supposed to imitate like a suspension but the problem is uh, basically the springs keep the landing gear nice and open um, but when it comes to putting the model down onto these suspensions because the model's plastic and it's very light these springs stay very nice and tight and keep it sort of sticking up um, so it doesn't actually kind of sit down and sit down nicely so you know as I say it doesn't seem to work and it seems like a load of hassle takes the fun out of it it's quite problematic from everyone says and very complicated and everyone I've kind of read reviews of and everything just go just glue it into place and leave it at that because you know at the end of the day we're not going to be playing with these models we're just going to put them on our shelves either in a fl in flight display or sitting on all threes whatever um, so I'm going to have a look at that, but I'm probably just going to glue it in place and not, you know, go through the hassle of all that. Um, you can have the arrestor hook that can kind of come up and down, but we'll, we'll you know, it's all springs and stuff, and I, um, it doesn't sound like it's worth the hassle. So we'll, I'll just have to have a look at it. Um, then we come to a second kind of problem with this kit, from what I've read in reviews, is this whole engine section. Now the engine section looks fantastic for out of the box. You've literally got everything there. You don't really need to add any more to it, um, and it does look really good. But the problem is, is this whole. To, do you know that nice engine cowl I was talking about where it fits together really nice um, and you don't really need to glue it? So if you want the engine on show, you can put these engine cowls on or off at will. However, apparently, um, if you want to close it up, put these engine cowls on, you've got to remove certain detail from the engine section to get these engine cowls on. Um, so we have this kind of, although we have the option to open and close the engine, um, we then have to kind of sacrifice whether to remove certain details to be able to kind of have it on and off or just do we just stick with either choosing do we want it on or do we want it off. Um, you know, a bit of a shame there, but maybe we could work something out in a step by step. Then we have our, uh, actually that's what I forgot to show you in this um, little bit of a inbox review is our decals and that. Right, the decals look rather nice. They are Tamiya typical decals, as you can see. They do look nicely in registry, look quite satin. Um, I don't think we're gonna have many problems. We're gonna have typical kind of Japanese style decals using um, the Japanese um, decaling solutions. Um, but then we come to, um, that's for your nice bit of natural metal finish for your um, for your your base sorry um, then we have these seat belts and these seat belts look a bit naff to be honest with you um, if we're getting a little bit closer they just seem to be one big sticker and we've got to cut them out to shape um, 
and then we use their thick photo etch to kind of make up some sort of seats. Now although it does kind of look a bit naff and doesn't sound like it's going to work, if we can kind of do a bit of jazzing up and a bit of nice weathering, we might be able to get these looking rather nice out the box. Then we have our canopy masks. Now these can canopy the masks look quite good until you realise that actually what you've got here is a printout of the canopy masks and then you've got to cut them out on here. Um, and if you ask me if you've got to cut them out on here, I'd rather just go off and just, you know, do the whole make your own mask by sticking masking tape onto the canopy itself and then cutting it on the, man uh, the canopy itself rather than this. But, you know, it's it's up to you how you want to use it. But, I mean, you know, if they're going to put something like it, that in there, they could at least have it properly cut out rather than this cut it yourself business so that's a bit of a, a low quality thing going on there for um, Tammy if you ask me um, moving along you know everything else is pretty standard stuff um, put in your propeller on um, canopy um, you can have your, your wing tips of a in an open position or a fold position, fuel tanks, bombs, you can have your um, your wheel chocks which is quite a nice little added extra as well. Um, call out for what kind of, to how to paint your pilot if you want to, how to put our base on here and then we also get shown how to cut up the box and fold it in a way in which we can um, take our plane and transport it basically um, you know if that's any good um, I probably doubt it I've boxed up enough models in the past to know how to box them up and what's the best way to get them there without them breaking and that doesn't look like a good way to me um, then we have our um, stencil call outs nice layout going there on there uh, that is that for the instructions and then we have our actual um, paint scheme going on here, nice paint scheme going on. Um, when it comes to like these, um, the round doors, it's so easy to go off and make your own mask and spray them on, looks fantastic. Um, but nice, easy kind of deckling with this one. Um, nice couple of different actual aircrafts we can um, do as well with the deckling. So rather nice there. And that is, whoa, finally, it for our inbox review um, so what is the final conclusion well I would say that this kit needs to be built by someone definitely intermediate going into fans definitely not for someone who is, is is new to the hobby now the score I gave this actual kit I gave this a um, an 8.7 which I think is rather a nice score um, between an 8 and an 8.9 is what is considered above average kit you know you're not going to have any problems should have great surface detail should look very good no real fit issues it's going to go together rather nice now this kit could have scored more it's just those ejector pin marks around this kit um, I think kind of um, I mean it's just strange how you've got this real nice um, next generation surface detail quality but then you've got this kind of average standard ejector pin mark quality in there where the ejector pin marks are just totally in all the places you don't want them um, the next thing about this kit as well where it kind of scores badly is cost now the cost of this kit um, varies depending on where you shop I managed to get this kit for £75 off Amazon um, you can shop around and you could end up paying all sorts of prices um, I mean I think when they first come out they were over a hundred pounds which is rather expensive um, you can get them for like 90 80 it's just um, if I, I'd probably say if you find anything that's above a hundred pounds do not buy it right you can get this kit below a hundred pounds um, but as I say it is rather expensive um, I mean you do get a lot for your money it is still a fantastic kit these kits are supposed to fit absolutely sublime surface detail is sublime um, yeah, but still 75 quid is a lot of money and that is probably the cheapest I could find it at 75 quid so you know it scores kind of badly there so I mean it could have hit like um, a 9 score maybe going into excellence if it wasn't for those ejector pin marks and the cost really um, 
But I suppose, apart from that, I mean, in this step-by-step -step video build, we are going to try and tackle, see, see how we're going to go back with those landing gears, because it sounds kind of like they're bad. The same with the engine detail, because I want to show that engine detail off, but I want to be able to kind of open and close the engine cowl, so we can try and work around that. The seat belts, they look like a problem with this kit, um, and people do go off and buy the Eddard seat belts, but I want to try and tackle them, see if we can do something with those seat belts as well. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed that inbox review. We're now going to get on with the rest of the step-by-step -step video build and building this. Um, but that is a nice 8.7 for Tamiya for their 132nd scale Zero Fighter Model 21. Let's start by getting our fuselage sections off of the sprue. Now when cutting off of the sprue, what we want to do is we want to cut it um, rather nicely. We don't want to go right up right to where the tab meets our fuselage section right we just want to come back a little bit right so that we leave a little bit of that um, tab actually onto the sprue as you can see there just a little bit just a tiny little bit of maybe a millimeter just the same here not right up to it like that we want to come back just a little bit and get that cut off Oops. So we can just cut these like so, all nice off, not quite off, one more, right, and then what we want to do uh, is we want to then tidy it up, and there's quite a few ways in which we could tidy this up, we have um, sanding sticks, well first off, what we can do, we could probably get rid of a bit of say this tab here because we have cut off a bit because what's going to happen is if we cut it with these right up to it what's potentially going to happen is it's going to kind of leave splinters and little kind of marks going into the plastic and we just want to shave it off the edge so I've just kind of tidied that up a bit there coming in with um, some skinny sanding sticks using sort of like a medium side and what we can do is just sand that up nicely and it should stand up rather quickly we can come to the kind of fine buffing side just to tidy that up nicely a bit there and hopefully as you can see that has come up um, rather nice it's nicely gone we've got no marks there I'm not feeling any kind of marks there and that should be good um, for gluing together so just to quickly show you that again we've got on the underside we've got a bit of a tab going on there um, we can probably get away with just sanding this with the fine sanding stick until that comes up nicely might have to follow this one around. Well, I think this one needs a little bit of a trim because it's just coming on the where we're going to actually do the gluing. We want that nice and flat, definitely. Because if we leave this sticking out a bit, that is going to make a gap because it's going to push the two pieces of plastic away from each other and leave us with a gap. So let's get that sanding stick out again on this bit here. Which it's fine on top, just got to get just underneath here, nicely sanded out, and there we go. That should be good to join together. And the surface, just trying to find actually where it was, there it is. Sanding it does give you the best results. Now, I know in the past I've just come along and I've showed you to just nicely cut these off. I do still prefer this method of just trimming it off but for the best results it's better to get a sanding stick out want to start off with just keeping it nice and simple uh, what we've got to remember about these instructions is they are quite complex so let's just take it nice and easy let's just start off with steps uh, one to three of the instructions um, now, after cutting you know, all the pieces off within these um, three steps, trimming them up and everything, we want to get some glue out. Now, um, glue, good product for glue is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. What it does is it melts the plastic. It doesn't glue the two pieces together, it actually melts the two pieces of cast plastic, welding it together, which gives you such a much nicer fit. It glues a lot better um, and it's really nice stuff. It's kind of hard to get hold of. Um, 
um, you basically get it imported from um, Japan um, there are some model online model stores that do sell it um, if they don't sell it they might sell um, Mr. Cement S um, it's it's a bit tricky to get hold of but you know you can quite reliably get it from um, Japan I've, I've done it many a times bought it from Japan um, you're paying about six pounds ish even to import it from Japan nice product um, if you want to see more there is a, a, a product review stroke tutorial on that on the website but basically what we can do is um, we can in this case we can put a little blob just inside that um, little hole there and put in our AMC in that little hole it'll just hold it just nicely um, you could leave it at that but what we can do is just around the edges add a little bit more glue to make sure that goes in there we can get a little blade just to push it down because what we don't want to do fingers touching it because what will happen is um, if we touch with this stuff and our fingers what will happen is it'll come off in cobwebs just like the old uh, stuff we used to use in the 70s so that's nicely down and then the next piece as well to show you a bit more glue in is K18 and what we want to do we want to put one of these little black poly um, caps in there and what we can do is just nice and lightly just around this little rim here put a little bit of glue we don't want to get loads in there and sort of end up gluing the poly cap and everything just a nice little bit just to hold it into place and then we can just follow the seam line both sides with a bit more glue and that should be nicely glued in place and we want those two pieces in before we do um, any spraying Right then, now what we're going to do with uh, some spraying is I'm just using our Evolution airbrush here at about 20 psi. And what we want to do, um, start off with a nice bit of thinners. And um, I'm using the homebrew thinners. You can go onto the Genesis Models website under, um, I think it's. Uh, product reviews or tutorials there's basically this um, how to make your own thinners homebrew thinners um, very nice video to watch there um, it will save you a heap load of money and to be honest with you, I've been using this stuff for ages now and it just seems to work better than a lot of the manufactured thinners and as I say it's a hell of a lot cheaper and what we do we're gonna pour in about a 50 50 mix we're gonna well we're gonna pour in a nice sort of um, thinking about it maybe about 20 30 percent of that then what I want to do is I want to get a bit of future now this is something I've been experimenting around with because then um, what we want to do we want to um, put a nice primer down get the surface nicely ready for spraying and this stuff is really great this Vallejo surface primer um, but what I like to do is add um, maybe about 25 percent sort of thinners 25 percent of future which is a product review again on the website for that and then I want to put the other 50% of um, our primer and make sure you give it a good shake because it does um, sediment at the bottom and you get it all not mixed right you want to get it all nicely mixed up and then we can put the other 50% in here just like that get in an old paintbrush we want to get it nicely mixed up remembering that the reason why we put thinners in first is the thinners is going to get down to the needle end and that's going to be the first thing you spray out because we can't get the brush down to the needle end and mix up down there so it's just going to be hopefully nicely thinners that we spray out first rather than pure paint first right then just want to get a nice kitchen paper towel we'll just put this down and I'm just going to quickly show you um, just putting this bit of primer down um, now with this surface primer what we want to do we want to check our alpha make sure we're nicely spraying nicely yes pushing down for air pulling back gives us our paint and what we want to do is we just want to lightly spray on a quick light misty coat all over nothing nothing heavy nothing nothing like that. nice 
and light we want it nice and light because this surface primer likes something to stick to so if we put this light misty coat there when we put our proper coat down next it's got something to stick to i.e itself it likes to stick to itself so i'm just um, pushing down the trigger just getting air so that we can um, just dry this off and because it's a nice light misty coat this will dry rather quickly now what the future is doing here is it it, it it sort of enhances our surface primer because what it does is it, it helps it dry quicker um, locks it in a bit better makes it a little bit more satin and um, basically what it means is because with this surface primer one of its downfalls is you can't you've got to let it dry for at least 24 hours before you do any kind of sanding or any kind of modifications to it because it will peel um, but once it's dried after 24 hours you can sand at it but what the future does is it locks it in dries it quicker and literally as soon as it's touch dry you can sand away and you're not going to get any peeling right so now that's had a nice light mister coat and it's had time to dry we can now put on a nice decent light coat all over nicely building this up nice and ready for the spraying that we're going to be doing to this. Make sure you get into all those nooks and crannies. And there we go, that is nice and prime. Cut into air, help it dry off a bit. And that's what we want to do to all our pieces before we do any proper spraying. <laughs>